What's going on everyone, Poke Professor here and welcome to today's video. Now I am super excited for the video because this is going to be our first Pokemon lecture from the Pokelab looking at various Pokemon. And what better way to start it to look at our Gen 1 Pokemon from the Kanto region. But before we get into that, let's check out our today's positive Bible of the week and we're going to come back to that later on in the video so please stay around for that. Now what better Pokemon to start it off with, with number one on the Pokedex and that is Bulbasaur. Now Bulbasaur is a seed Pokemon. It is a grass and poison type um, which you can sort of support those different um, abilities and moves within the games as well as within the anime and it's quite a small Pokemon. Its height is only uh, 2 feet um, and 4 inches, uh, 0 0.7 meters and its weight is just over 15 pounds uh, which uh, Equivoc uh, equivocates to 6.9 kilograms. Now in regards to its actual um, biology, Bulbasaur is a small Pokemon that has blue uh, green skin with a darker patches. It has red eyes with a white pupil and pointed ear like structures on top of its head. It has a short blunt snout with a wide mouth and a pair of small pointed teeth that are visible from the upper jaw when its mouth is fully open. Um, each of its thick legs end up with three sharp claws. On Bulbasaur's back is a green uh, plant bulb, uh, which is grown from a seed planted there uh, at birth. Now, the bulb also contains two slender tentacle-like vines and provides it with energy through photosynthesis as well as uh, nutrition seeds, uh, which are contained from within. Now, uh, they're mainly found, well, Bulbasaur's are mainly found within the grasslands uh, through the Kanto region. However, uh, due to Bulbasaur's status being a starter Pokemon, you only really come across it um, with it being the Pokemon that you pick from the beginning or it being a uh, Pokemon that you come across it being owned by another trainer. Now, I do love uh, Bulbasaur. I think it's a very unique Pokemon. Fantastic starter in regards to the Gen 1s. Um, I did use to pick this Pokemon um, on sort of various occasions, but it sort of varied in terms of which Pokemon I used to pick, depending on how I wanted to go through uh, in the various games. But for me, Bulbasaur is a fantastic start to our Pokemon that we're going to be looking at within today's video. An interesting fact that I found with Bulbasaur is that 87.5% of Pokemon, uh, of Bulbasaurs that are caught within the wild, are actually male and only 12.5% are female. It's not specified which uh, gender Ash's and Bulbasaur was, but from the statistics we can safely say that probably it was a male Bulbasaur that Ash caught within the anime. Now our next Pokemon is Ivysaur. It is the second generation in regards to an uh, evolution from Bulbasaur. Uh, in terms of its visual and its biology um, sort of abdominal structures that have changed. Similar, it is a another amphibian um, Pokemon that has green and blue uh, type of skin with dark patches. Um, similar sort of structure with its ears being at the top of its head and it has narrow red eyes. Ivysaur has a short rounded snout with a wild mouth and a two pointed teeth on the upper jaw. Uh, each of his feet has three claws and them similar to Bulbasaur and the bulb of his back has bloomed into a large pink bud. Uh, a short brown uh, trunk surrounded by its a leafy green area which is formed upon of the, of the end that supports the actual bud in general. Now the weight of the plant prevents um, Bulbasaur actually running too fast and standing on its legs, on its hind legs actually, forcing its legs to grow um, very sturdy and support the bud as it grows um, bigger and bigger. And that's what you can see it in terms of its structural change in terms of Bulbasaur uh, being quite a, a um, agile, more, more agile Pokemon and that Ivysaur being more sturdy and sort of a uh, more stronger defense in regards to that. Um, it has the same type, it's also a grass and a poison type Pokemon. Um, similar traits to how it is in regards to um, Bulbasaur. Ivysaur actually has a, a growth in terms of 0 0.3 meters, so its height is now 3 feet, as well, which equivocates to 1 meter, and its weight is uh, 28.7 pounds, which is 13 kilograms. So, Gets it a bit heavier and uh, in regards to it being sort of a Pokemon that has developed in terms of its aesthetic value um, um, with its bud now sort of blooming within sort of the pink um, sort of blossom flower at the end. Some of its poke, um, sort of things that you can see in regards to Bulbasaur in terms of it being quite territorial and that's something that is quite evident within the animes as well. 
Now, our final Pokemon in terms of the very first one from Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, and of course it is going to be Venusaur. Now, Venusaur is a very unique Pokemon. It is, um, in the terms of its actual uh, size and stature, it's completely different uh, to um, Bulbasaur as well as Ivysaur. Its sprout on the back is almost completely um, bloomed and blossomed into uh, almost looks like a palm tree, well, pink palm tree. Um, but in terms of its size, that's where it's, there's a huge monstrous uh, difference. Its height is now two meters or uh, six foot in terms of its weight from something that was 13 kg before uh, it is now 100 kg or 220 pounds so you can see in terms of its actual size and its stature as well as its weight there's a huge difference between Bulbasaur, Ivysaur and Venusaur does triumph amongst the three. Now Venusaur um, is similar to how it is with its um, sort of uh, pre-evolutions in regards to how it is. It now has bumpy uh, um, blue green skin. It has small circular red eyes and short um, blunt snout. Its mouth is wide and it has two pointy teeth in the upper jaw and four in the lower jaw. On top of its head is a small pointed ears and a uh, reddish um, which are reddish and pink inside. It has three claws and um, toes on each foot and the bud on the back has bloomed into a large pink white spotted flower. The flower is supported by a thick brown trunk um, surrounded by green um, petals as well as uh, in terms of a female Ivysaur, uh, Venusaur, sorry, you can see the seed uh, in the center of its flower. So that's how you can actually distinguish between the male and female Venusaurs uh, within uh, the animes as well as sort of a visual context as well. Now Venusaur uses this flower to catch the sunlight and rays to convert them into energy. One of the most prominent moves that you know from the anime as well as the games is probably Solar Beam. Uh, I know that Bulbasaur can use Solar Beam as well as uh, Ivysaur as well, but Venusaur takes it in terms of it uses its uh, photosynthesis to absorb the energy of the sun and then um, propels a very powerful beam to uh, defeat its Pokemon. The flower releases a smooth scent in, uh, that attracts Pokemon and calms uh, emotions. Uh, this scent can be stronger uh, after a rainy day. In anime, um, you can see that Venusaur demonstrates this ability by uh, manipulating nature, releasing several vines from its back to lead um, an evolution ceremony for Bulbasaur and Ivysaur. Uh, this Pokemon is rarely found in the wild and is best known to inhabit the grasslands. So that's something that if you remember from the anime in terms of when various one Ash's um, Bulbasaur was meant to be evolving and its um, bud on its back starts to glow. Uh, they all gather within a sort of central place and then the one that sort of led that ceremony was a Venusaur indeed. Um, for me, a lot, amazing Pokemon, massive uh, fan of it. Um, did enjoy sort of the Mega Evolutions when it can Mega uh, uh, evolve into Mega Venusaur uh, through a, a Venusaurite um, stone which you can uh, obtain in the game. Um, within the X and Y regions. But for me, another fantastic Pokemon, something that everyone had a huge um, sort of love for, especially within the TCG and animes in general. And that caps off our first three Pokemon. Now, let's get on with our next three Pokemon and no better way to start it with uh, a few fan favorites and that is Charmander. Now Charmander sits at number four within our Pokedex and it is a lizard type Pokemon. It is a fire type as well, uh, similar to terms of how it is with its um, base starter counterpart with Bulbasaur. Um, it is uh, quite a small Pokemon, it only stands at two feet tall, uh, 0.6 meters, weighing in at 18.7 pounds, uh, which is also uh, 8.5 kilograms. Now in regards to its um, biology with Charmander, Charmander is quite a unique Pokemon because it is a reptilian Pokemon with a primarily orange body and blue eyes. Um, on its chest and its lower feet, it has more of a cream colored soul um, type of color. Uh, it has two uh, small fangs that are visible from its upper jaw and two small fangs that are visible from its lower jaw. The fire burns at the tip and that's what I think is quite unique with this Pokemon uh, at the end of its slender tail and it has blazed there since Charmander's birth. The flame can be used as an indicator of Charmander's health if you remember from the anime uh, when um, Charmander was left um, dead if one wanted to die. Um, uh, under the rain and its flame was quite low um, and due to it being exposed to quite harsh uh, um, weathers and that is not suitable for Charmander um, and when Ash tries to sort of um, get it to 
uh, the poker center, it covered its hand, um, the flame to make sure it doesn't go out. It also um, sort of reflects its mood as well as uh, burning brightly. It shows quite a healthy Pokemon and shows that the Pokemon is strong. Um, weakly, it can be exhausted and wavering that it's not happy and um, or if it is, it, or, or if it is um, blazing quite brightly, it also shows that the Pokemon could be enraged. Now, it said that Charmander would die if the flame was to go out. Uh, however, this Pokemon is healthy and the flame will continue to burn even when it gets a bit wet and it also is um, said to steam within the rain. Now, Charmander can be found in very hot areas, mainly within the mountainous areas of uh, the Encanto. Uh, however, with it being sort of a starter Pokemon, you only see it through ownerships of your own and other trainers within the games. But within the actual Kanto region, within Animes, that's where Char uh, Charmander is more formidably found. Now let's move on to our next Pokemon, which is the evolution of Charmander, and that indeed is Charmeleon. Now, Charmeleon moves on from being a lizard type Pokemon to actually being a flame type Pokemon. Uh, it still supports it being a fire type, as well as in terms of its size and structure, its height slightly changes from um, going up to 3 feet in height or 1.1 meters and its weight is 41.9 pounds or 19 kilograms. Now I love Char Charmeleon mainly due to the fact that it shows a bit of swagger to the Pokemon. I think in terms of anime it was quite rebellious in terms of not sh um, following Ash's orders and you can sort of see that in terms of his sort of personality and the way the Pokemon looks. I think it, it sort of was, was a great um, sort of design uh, from the Pokemon company as well as well as its illustrators and one thing that I do love about Char uh, Charmeleon in terms of how it's slowly starting to resemble its uh, features of its final evolution which we'll come into later on in um, within the video. Now similar to Charmander, Charmeleon is a, a reptilian type Pokemon. It has dark red scales um, as well as a cream undersize from its chest down. It has blue eyes and a short, a long snout which is slightly hooked at the tip. Uh, on the back of its head is a slightly single um, long horn and that protrudes as well as it having a relatively long arms as well as three sharp claws on each hand. It has short legs um, and sort of feet with three claws as well as a cream colored soles. And the tip of its long powerful tail is a flame burning on it. Um, the temperature rises um, but unbearably, to unbearable levels, the Charmeleon swings its tail. Now Charmeleon is a vicious uh, nature and it will continue to seek out opponents as well as strong opponents that excite this Pokemon, causing it to sprout um, blushes of white flames to torch its surroundings. However, it can relax once it has won the battle. Um, it is rare and wild and can only be found within mountainous areas. Obviously with it being within the actual games, you only can come across it within, uh, at, with it being within your own party or other trainer parties as well. But another fantastic Pokemon uh, to evolve from Charmander and that is Charmeleon. Moving on to our final one. Now the Pokemon to end those um, for the final evolution is going to be the fan favorite and that indeed is Charizard. Now Charizard, similar to Charmeleon, is a flame type Pokemon, but this is also now a dragon type Pokemon mainly due to obviously you can see from its aesthetics which we'll come on to in a minute um, it can now support flying as well as dragon type moves now in terms of its actual abdominal structure Charizard now stands at five feet tall 1.7 meters and it weighs now just shy of 200 pounds which is an over 90 kilograms now the biology of Charizard um, is quite unique Charizard is a dragon type Pokemon which is primarily orange and has a cream underside um, from its chest to the top of its tail it has a very long neck and small blue eyes. It has slightly raised nostrils and has two horn-like structures protruding from the back of its rectangular head. It has two fangs that are visible from its upper jaw and even when the mouth is closed you can still see those um, two fangs. It has two large wings that have blue and green undersigned that sprout from its back and a horn-like structure that goes at the tip at the end of each wing. Um, Charizard has sort of quite stubby legs that have sort of claws, three claws at the end. Has quite short arms, um, but it has sort of very strong um, abdominal features in terms of its stomach. But in regards to its wingspan, it can sort of soar up to many heights and sort of use those wings within its battle and can fly around to different regions. Now Charizard flies in search of powerful opponents to battle. Um, I think this is probably one of the main reasons why it's seen as a fan favourite, mainly due to its personality within the animes as well as its nature as well. Um, it's always trying to look at 
other Pokemon to battle and uh, just to see who's the most dominant Pokemon out there. Uh, within anime, you know that Charizard, as we know that Charizard has uh, had its few run-ins with legendary Pokemon, of which it is standards, uh, which it stood its ground very well. Um, in the, within the TCG, Pokemon, um, Charizard was one of the strongest Pokemon within the first generation of um, cards that were released from the Pokemon company. It was one of the only Pokemon that had a base hit move that had over, uh, well, had 120 hit points. So uh, Charizard has always been a huge favorite within sort of the uh, Pokemon community. And um, that also is sort of reflected within sort of its history as well, in terms of how its nature is. Um, it is said that its fire grows hotter and burns hotter um, when it gains experience, um, it has this fiery breath that which is capable of burning boulders and massive glaciers, and it's also known that it can accidentally cause forest fires um, once uh, within different regions uh, within the Pokemon world. Now Charizard has never turned out uh, turned out any opponent that is weak in itself, and Charizard typically inhabits the mountainous areas as well as the valleys. Um, it's also known uh, to have a region within Johto, uh, which is the Charific Valley, um, in which it was a sanctuary of various Charizards and Ash's Charizard went there to stay um, as it sort of came across other Charizard that was much more stronger and powerful than him. Uh, rather than sort of backing down from that challenge, he wanted to learn from the best and become more stronger as an individual. And that's what I think makes Charizard quite unique and different to other Pokemon that are out there. Now moving on to our final three Pokemon from the Gen 1 starters and that is my personal favourite if you've seen my um, previous videos which is Squirtle. Now Squirtle is a tiny turtle type Pokemon. It is water based and a water type Pokemon. Um, what I love about Squirtle is that it sort of obviously resembles a turtle as we all know but I just loved its uniqueness in terms of his character within the anime. I fell in love with Squirtle mainly due to the anime in the episode of Squirtle Squad and it showed a sort of a different character and uh, something that was quite unique and I'd love that the Pokemon company and the Pokemon sort of uh, region sort of introduced that within um, different personalities within Pokemon and Squirtle was one of my favourites. It stands at uh, just uh, one foot high, uh, half a metre tall as well as in terms of his weight, which is uh, just shy of 20 pounds, and that is equivalent to 9 kg. Now in terms of its biology, Squirtle is quite a unique Pokemon. Uh, it is a small reptilian Pokemon uh, that resembles a light blue turtle. It typically uh, walks on two on its uh, front two short legs and has been shown to run around on all fours um, in terms of it being sort of quite mobile, sort of getting from one place to another in terms of the animes as well. It has a large um, purplish and reddish eyes as well as a single hooked upper lip. Um, each of its hands has and its feet have three pointed um, uh, digits, um, not claws that are similar to what Bulbson and Charmander have, it just has sort of standard fingers. Uh, in regards to at the end of its uh, long coattail inwards, its body is encased within a tough shell that forms and hardens after birth. Now, Squirtle for me is uh, a wonderful uh Pokemon mainly due to sort of it has its most highest defense um, when it's threatened it sort of um, retracts within its shell uses its shell for its various types of moves um, and something that I feel that was quite a formidable part of this um, Squirtle sort of advantages as a Pokemon um, and it was sort of very useful a very useful Pokemon especially for Ash during his journey for him becoming a Pokemon master so for me Squirtle definitely gets a massive thumbs up from my point of view. Now moving on to their evolution from Squirtle and that is Wartle. Now Wartle is, moves on from a, being a tiny top turtle Pokemon to being just a turtle Pokemon and you can see it mainly due to its size. Um, I'm a huge fan of Wartle. I can see there's more of aggression that is um, you can see in terms of um, War Turtle's demeanor, especially with uh, in the animes as well. There's um, various different episodes in which War Turtle um, is sort of confronted and shows um, sort of more of a territorial um, sort of personality compared to um, Squirtle. Now, in terms of its size, its height, it stands at three feet, uh, one meter. Its weight is 49.6 pounds, uh, which is equivalent to 22.5 kg. Now, the biology of water, or 
very similar to Squirtle, but in terms of it being, it is uh, the same being the reptilian Pokemon, similar to a turtle, has brown eyes and a dark blue streak on each of its cheeks, has two sharp teeth protruding from its upper from its upper jaw, has uh, now, rather than it having fingers, it has now three claws um, and sort of pointy toes within on each hand. On each side of its head, it has feather-like ears uh, covered with pale um, blue fur. It has sort of a brown shell on the top part of its, um, a dark brown color on the top part of its shell, as well as the underside is going to be a sort of a pale yellow. Now, its tail sort of has the same uh, curled um, features as it does with Squirtle, but this time there's uh, um, a more sort of uh, thicker um, part of the um, uh, tail that's sort of covered in similar um, blue fur that is on its ears. Um, in terms of its uh, teeth that protrude from its mouth when its mouth is closed, uh, just sort of gives it all these sort of characteristics of it being quite more um, sort of more aggressive compared to its previous um, pre-evolution. Now, because they're larger than Squirtle, it has a larger shell. Water is more difficult; has a more difficult time walking on land, so it rather keeps itself more balance within the water. To maintain balance uh, while swimming at very high speeds, water all moves its furry ears and its tail um, as both rudders and was, as well as balancing rods as well. Now air can be stored uh, within its fur to uh, extend underwater diving. It hides within the waters and hunting and emerging to surprise its, its prey. In anime it shows that water or can be found living in colonies on various islands as well as um, it's known or sort of researched by um, the Pokemon professors around the world that its habitat that it seems to prefer is within freshwater ponds as well as lakes as well. For me, another fantastic Pokemon. Now the final Pokemon we're going to be talking about today is going to be none other than a Blastoise which caps off our Gen 1 Pokemon. Now in terms of a Blastoise it actually evolves from Water or from being a Turtle type Pokemon to a Shellfish type Pokemon. Uh, similar to how it is before it is still a Water type Pokemon but the main difference is mainly in its size. It now stands at uh, 5 feet to 1.6 meters as well as just weighing uh, at uh, 188 uh, pounds or 85.5 kilograms. Now for me actually that I found that quite surprising because I thought that Blastoise would be the heaviest out of the three mainly due to its sort of large um, cannons uh, on the back of its shell uh, that protrude out of the top of right of it and the left of its shoulders but in terms of its sort of structure I just thought it had just a better defense compared to uh, Venusaur as well as Charizard as well. Now Blastoise is a large um, a uh, turtle type Pokemon, its body is blue and it's mostly hidden within this tough brown shell. The shell is a cream coloured uh, underside and a white ridged um, encircling of arms separating from the upper and lower halves. Uh, two powerful water cannons uh, reside from the top uh, part of the shell as I spoke about before. Uh, it, these cannons can be uh, extended as well as withdrawn. Now Blaster's head is triangle, has triangular ears as well as black on the inside as well as it has sh uh, small brown eyes and a cream coloured lower jaw. Uh, its arms are thick and it has uh, three claws on each hand and its feet have also three claws as well as the front and on the and one on the back. Uh, poking out of the bottom part of the shell is a stubby tail. Now in terms of its main uh, attribute has is are these powerful cannons and now the powerful cannons of this Pokemon uh, are capable of producing water blasts that can um, pierce um, steel as well as concrete, it can be used for high speed charges. Blastoise deliberately makes itself heavy uh, to withstand these powerful blasts and can crush its opponents. Um, one of the main sort of uh, episodes in terms of uh, you come across Blastoise is within the island and you see this huge shell which uh, Ash comes across and it's actually a Blastoise that is sleeping uh, mainly due to Jigglypuff um, singing a lullaby and sending this po uh, Pokemon to sleep. Now I've always loved this Pokemon, loving Squirtle and um, that used to be always in within my um, starter Pokemon or my uh, party when I used, to, uh, used the games. Blastoise used to be obviously the evolution that used to end um, at the final stage of it and it was just a Pokemon I just truly loved and it was something that I love its robustness, I loved its aggression, I love uh, its power through its uh, water cannons and, and the various different moves with Hydro Pump, um, uh, Waterfall, um, Water Blast, Water Cannon, those are the um, 
sort of um, moves I liked and I was always a fan of water type Pokemon anyway. Um, it does have a um, Mega Evolution similar to um, Venusaur with it having um, Mega Venusaur, uh, Mega Charizard as well as I spoke about before and it does have Mega Blastoise um, which does evolve within X and Y regions. Now that brings us to a conclusion of today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please leave a like and subscribe if you're new and we'll get back to today's positive vibe of the day so stay in tune for that.